Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about web directory brute force attacks and how it can benefit a professional penetration test. However, I wanna start out by saying that there's a lot of risks performing this type of an attack, especially within large organizations. There have actually been a couple cases where pen test companies that I've worked for have implemented organizational wide bans on this activity. The problem is that when performed incorrectly, brute forcing directories can produce denial of service attacks. And when we're targeting production systems, that can be simply devastating. So before we go any further, I wanna stipulate that until you understand how directory brute force attacks work, only use this technique within your pen testing lab. So with that out of the way, let's learn how to actually perform a brute force directory attack correctly. So for this tutorial, we're going to use a tool called DIRB, D-I-R-B. DIRB is actually a command line tool that we can use to brute force web directories and files, which helps in identifying hidden files and directories on the web server that hopefully we can leverage in our attack. There is another popular tool called DIRBuster, but that one is GUI based. And I wanted to avoid that conversation simply because within a professional penetration test, we oftentimes don't have access to a GUI tool, and that's why it's important to understand how to perform it from a command line. And DERB does just that. So now that I've done a quick introduction, let's go ahead and get right into it. But before we begin, I just wanna remind everyone again to visit our website at Pentest TV, where you can sign up for free training and then watch some other tutorials that we have that have been deemed not quite suitable for YouTube. We also have a Discord server that you need to check out as well with all links in the description. So we're gonna start with a scan against the Metasploitable 2 exploitable server. So we're gonna use the following command and then just let it run. So this command uses Derb's default word list uh, to scan the target website. Once it's completed, we can see that it attempted to download basically 30,000 directories or files and there was a final count of 56. So it found 56 possible targets. Now, the thing I wanna pay attention to that it did all of that within just 24 seconds. So against a system that has a load balancer in front of it, this wouldn't be a big deal. But performing this attack in an internal network that has restricted bandwidth, this could cripple the network. So I showed you how to use a simple word list, but to enhance the effectiveness of our scan, we can use custom word lists. So Kali Linux comes with several word lists located in the user share word list directory. So we're just gonna use a couple different word lists for our scan. So this command specifies the big.txt word list, which contains a more extensive list of potential directories and files. Now this scan is gonna take a while, so we'll just come back when it's done. Now that this scan is completed, we can see that it sent over 3 million requests and found 423 files or directories. The time was significantly longer and that took over 50 minutes to complete. So obviously there's an advantage to using a larger word list than the one that's used by default, but be aware of the trade-offs, which is time and network bandwidth. So we can save the results of the scan to a file for later analysis. And all we really have to do is add the dash lowercase o and then the name of the text file. So DERB allows recursive scanning by default, but in, there are some cases where we don't actually want it to perform a recursive scan. Maybe we just wanna identify quickly what types of directories exist before we start digging in any further. And in order to be able to do that, we just have to add the dash R option. If we want a little bit more flexibility, instead of it just automatically ignoring any sort of recursiveness, we can use the dash capital R flag instead, and it'll prompt us and ask us if we want to continue to find out for more information and do a recursive search on a particular directory. So DERB has several advanced options that can be very useful for us. So for example, if we want to limit the scan to just certain file extensions, we have the dash capital X option. So as we see here, we're asking it for .php and .html. So let's take a look at the output using this command. 
So we can see that it filtered out anything that did not contain those extensions. So sometimes you want to filter out certain HTTP status codes from the results. And in this case, we just use the dash capital N option to exclude those specific codes. So the last flag I want to talk about, and it's probably the most important, is the dash Z flag. So this is a rate limiter, and it's going to slow our attack so it doesn't impact a system's performance. So if we run the same command with a dash Z 100, we can see that it's actually a lot slower already, but let's go ahead and let it finish and take a look at what we get. So we can see that the final scan took just short of an hour, which is compared to less than a minute when we didn't use the dash Z100. So now the number that you need for how many millisecond delay for each of your requests, that's gonna be up to you depending on your environment. You're gonna be able to find out pretty quickly if it's a fairly open environment or you need to start restricting. My suggestion is always start out slow and then speed up. The other thing you wanna do is avoid any sort of mass scan, find your target, perform the test, then move on to the next one. Don't just do a blast scan against the entire network. So that covers some basics and some advanced features of DERB. It's not a very complicated tool. It is very powerful and it should be a staple in your penetration testing toolkit. But just remember to always have permission before scanning any website. Make sure that you target and don't just do broadcast scans. So if you have any questions about the tool or about performing a directory brute force attack, please don't hesitate to leave comments in the section below. Also make sure to check out our Discord server. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And with that, happy hacking.